Welcome to the Holistic Psychiatry Podcast. I'm Courtney Brown Snyder, a physician and holistic adult and child psychiatrist. In this episode, I'll be talking about how hormones, specifically estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, impact our neurotransmitters. In previous episodes, I've discussed many root causes of brain symptoms. None of these, however, exist independently from our hormones. Here, I'll address the impact of our sex hormones on neurotransmitter functioning, and I'll also address how such changes can impact our personalities and mental health over our lifetime. While there is a great deal of diversity in our hormonal states, there are obvious similarities for those who are born female and similarities for those who are born male. Hormones are exceedingly complex, so this will be oversimplified. To start, let me provide some information to review on the role of neurotransmitters. In short, serotonin is associated with joy, well-being, enjoyment, pleasure, and restful sleep. Dopamine is associated with pleasure and reward. Norepinephrine, arousal. GABA is associated with calming and rest. And glutamate with learning, memory, and mood regulation. To briefly review COMT and MAOA, gene variants. COMT codes for catechol-O-methyltransferase, an enzyme that metabolizes catecholamines, so dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine. It also metabolizes estrogen. If we have a slow COMT, there can be a buildup of catecholamines, especially when we're under stress, and this can cause high anxiety. When we have a fast COMT, This can result in catecholamines being cleared too quickly, and this can result in cravings, addictive tendencies, and excessive sleepiness. MAOA similarly metabolizes catecholamines, but it also metabolizes serotonin, and it can be fast or slow. And again, when it is slow, there would be a buildup of neurotransmitters and potentially anxiety, and when it is fast, there can be a depletion, and in this case, carbohydrate craving, irritability, and potentially anger. So onward to the topic, mental health data across the lifespan. We are most vulnerable to mental health conditions when sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone are at their highest. Mental health conditions peak in adolescence and early adulthood and improve after 50 Half of all mental health problems are established by age 14 and 75% by age 24. A decrease in hormones later in life is another vulnerable time. Depression and dementia are the most common, affecting 5 to 7% of the population over 60. How do hormones impact our neurotransmitters? Estrogen. For females, estrogen increases during puberty and obviously during the ovarian cycle. It is especially high during pregnancies and starts to decrease in perimenopause. Estrogen slows the expression of COMT and MAOA, so slowing of these enzymes can increase dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. More estrogen can mean more neurotransmitters and potential problems calming down and being able to relax. This is why collectively, women can be more susceptible to anxiety. It may be why girls and women in high school and college are more academically engaged than their male peers. Many factors can impact our estrogen state. For example, we have other genes besides COMT that affect estrogen levels. There are also environmental factors, such as birth control or hormone replacement, and or pseudoestrogens from chemicals in our environment such as BPAs, fire retardants, pesticides, and herbicides that can also add to estrogen dominance. Slowing these genes by estrogen can override a fast COMT and or MAOA variant. Estrogen can also impact copper levels, something I've talked about in previous episodes. High copper can impact neurotransmitter functioning. For women and girls who have a copper regulation vulnerability, which is often genetic, high estrogen states can mean lower dopamine 
and higher norepinephrine activity. So copper is needed for the conversion of dopamine to norepinephrine. So examples of high copper could be girls who, around the time of puberty, have a new onset of depression, anxiety, or attentional issues. Any teen or woman who has worsening of mood, anxiety, or decreased attention after starting oral contraceptives or hormone replacement. Any woman with a history of postpartum depression, anxiety, or psychosis. The Walsh Research Institute found that 95% of women who reported having postpartum depression had high copper. Copper levels go up during pregnancy as estrogen levels go up, but should return to normal pre-pregnancy levels after birth. If a woman has problems regulating copper, it can stay high and contribute to postpartum symptoms. Estrogen can also increase activity at the NMDA receptor. NMDA receptor is a glutamate receptor, and high activity there can look like getting stuck in repetitive thought patterns such as ruminations, obsessions, flashbacks from trauma, cravings from addiction, or delusions with psychosis. Other factors that can increase activity at this receptor include undermethylation, high histamine states, low zinc, and low magnesium. Progesterone. Progesterone, like estrogen, increases during puberty and then starts to decrease in perimenopause. Its impacts on neurotransmitters differ from that of estrogen. Progesterone enhances GABA transmission, so GABA again is calming, Progesterone inhibits glutamate transmission and thus glutamate-induced dopamine release. As you can see, a woman with high estrogen relative to progesterone could be more vulnerable to the consequences of high activity at that NMDA receptor. Progesterone also enhances serotonin synaptic activity. So the big picture here is calming and potential improvement in mood. Testosterone. In males, testosterone levels start to increase in puberty and begin to drop off very gradually in the 30s and 40s. Relative to the decrease of estrogen and progesterone in women during menopause, testosterone levels don't decrease below normal levels until much later in life. They drop off by 1% a year and at 70 years of age are 30% below the peak. There can be reasons such as high oxidative stress or low zinc, for example, that could cause someone to have lower levels before then. Estrogen levels increase in men with age. Progesterone levels show more variability with age in men. Testosterone's impact on neurotransmitters can be more complicated, though in many ways mirror those of estrogen. While testosterone can increase dopamine in specific brain areas, It also speeds up the expression of COMT and MAOA, resulting in lower dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. This is the opposite of estrogen, which slows those genes down. When we have low neurotransmitter states, we may be more inclined to do things that will increase those neurotransmitters. Being scared or excited increases our neurotransmitters. We may be more stimulation-seeking. This may be why men collectively engage in more risk-taking activities and have better stress tolerance. Being low in these neurotransmitters can also contribute to irritability and anger. Evolutionarily, it may make sense that women would be less risk-taking, caregiving would benefit from less risk-taking, and hunting could benefit from more. Testosterone's ability to speed up MAOA appears to override a slow variant So men with a slow MAOA, which we might expect to increase those neurotransmitters, don't feel happier the way women with a slow MAOA do. And I reference these studies in the newsletter. RCCX theory and a weakness at 21 hydroxylase. To further complicate the story of sex hormones, many who have brain-related symptoms likely also have a vulnerability on the gene for 21-hydroxylase. This is a pivotal gene in stress hormone pathways that codes for an enzyme that turns 17-hydroxyprogesterone into cortisol, 
A weakness in this gene, aside from impacting cortisol levels, can lead to sex hormone differences by backing up or slowing down the pathway. Such differences can convey strengths and vulnerabilities. For example, women could have relatively high androgens or testosterone, and men or women could have relatively high progesterone. This is a complicated topic in of itself, which I have a previous episode on RCCX theory, and I have a paid newsletter that focuses more specifically on 21 hydroxylase. Thinking differently about our development. Psychologic development theories consider our cognitive, emotional, and social development across our lifespan. As you can see, each of these can be impacted by our hormones and their impact on our neurotransmitters. Puberty and midlife are times of tremendous change. Since it's unlikely that anyone reading this is going through puberty, I'll speak to those in or heading into midlife. We may notice changes in our personality and what we care about. We may even feel a slight sense of familiarity, a recognition of the child we once were before hormones altered our neurotransmitters. Thank you for listening. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to help me get this information out into the world, please consider sharing. If you would like to receive these in your mailbox each week and don't already, please consider subscribing at CourtneySnyderMD.com, where I also have information on my consultations that I offer nationally and internationally. Until next time, take care.